So welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, so today I just want to talk about how you can start your property portfolio without having any cash. So the strategy that you can use is leverage. So basically you would approach the bank. Um, that's after you have seen the property that you want to purchase. <laughs> After you have seen the property that you want to purchase right and then you tell the mortgager or you tell the bond originator that you also want the attorney fees or the transfer fees to be also added on that bond and then let's say you get a response maybe from three banks right um, the first bank says that they approve you for 100% and then the second one they say maybe they approve you for 80% that means that they want maybe a huge deposit or let's say 20% deposit to be put and then the third one will say maybe 100% and then what you will do is you will take these two that are 100% right and then you will weigh between the two of them and then you will take the one with the lower interest and then you will send it to the other one and then you challenge them maybe you tell them that you want them to drop the interest so that maybe they can bid this one right and then after they have come back maybe let's say they drop their interest by maybe two percent and they take the amended quotation and then you send it to the initial one and you tell them you want them to miss the deal maybe they will drop they will further drop the interest maybe by another two percent and then what you can do is if you don't want to play maybe usually you have 14 days to respond or to accept if you still have time you take the same deal that i made a deal and then you send it to the other one and you tell them to mess the deal eventually you get the lowest deal so you accept that one and then after you have accepted that one and then you sign and then maybe you go to the lawyers and sign so what you will do is you won't stay in that property you will look for a tenant that's what we call uh, leverage basically leverage is you using other people's money to finance your own assets or you finance your own endeavors remember as long as you are staying in a property and you are the one who's paying rates you are the one who's paying uh, bond you are the one who's paying uh, electricity that's not an asset that's a liability because it's taking money from you but if you get a tenant to stay there and to pay the bond to pay your bond and to pay for your rates then that's an asset because there's a cash flow that is happening it's not taking money from your pocket you understand and then one thing that you can do is after you find that tenant you look for a, a wealthy tenant you screen um, you screen your your tenants and then you look for the best one and then that tenant stays there and then they pay your bond uh, what you do is maybe you see that you have you when you're doing your budget you have an extra 500 or you have an extra thousand that you can spare and then you will take that thousand and you pay it or you top it up on your bond you do that for two years and then after two years you go to the bank and then you look for an excess bond or you look for an equity on the property sometimes you find out that you do have an equity on the house then what you will do is you will take that equity and then you will go and buy another house cash so now you have two properties so this one you're using it like a machine to fund this one right so after you have bought this one cash you go and look for another tenant again you put the tenant there in that second house so you have like two uh properties now that are making you money basically the other one you still financing it and then the other one you is paid up in cash then you wait for another two years you wait for another two years and you are doing the same strategy topping up this one from the money that you get from this one and then you wait maybe for another two years and then you look for how much the equity of this one and then you take that equity after the two years and you go and buy another third property so you have this one that you're using as a machine now it's like your atm so now at this point you have three properties <laughs> you bought the two cash and then you have this one that you're still financing and then you wait for another two years you can still you 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 use that property so you take the money that you get from the property number two and number three you top up the bond after another two years you take that equity you go and buy the fourth property right you go and buy a fourth property you're not using money from yourself no this property are paying themselves 
basically using this one as an ATM, like I've said, and then you buy your fourth property, and then you take the money from the three properties, you top it up on this one, right? And you top it up on this one. After another two years, you take the equity again, and then you go and buy the fifth property. So you have four properties that you have bought cash, and then you have one that you're still financing. Then at that point, you can decide that maybe, okay, fine, what you want to do is you want to take the money from the four properties, the rental income that you get from the four properties, and then you want to settle this one. And then maybe you stay um, three to five years. You, you said maybe five years, you want to finish this property. You take that five years and you pay with the money that you're getting from these four properties. You finish that property and then you have five properties that you have bought cash. And then from there, you decide what you want to do. Maybe you will save up from the money that you're getting from these properties. You will save up for another property that you can buy cash. Or you can choose to refinance another property. Let's say you have five properties that are fully paid up. You choose to refinance the one, you take the money, you buy a six property. So you have five properties that you, you, you bought cash and then you still have this one. You keep on doing that up until you build um, your, your portfolio. Guys, I'm not an advisor, so I would advise that you go and consult a professional advisor. So, but that, that's how you can build your portfolio in, 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 in property investment. So this one requires you to have discipline. This one requires you to have um, patience. You, you, you don't buy the house and then you go and you want to leave there. No, 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 no. But if you don't have any elsewhere to, to, to live, what you can do is you buy a property, you live in that property, right? But on weekends, on weekends, you leave that property and then you put it as an Airbnb so that you will get money from that property, right? Maybe you Airbnb it for the whole weekend. You get money. That's what you do. That's what you do up until, and the money that you get from that property, you don't go and spend it on a vacation, no. You take that money and you take it to the bank, you pay up the house, right? You keep on paying up the house for two years. After two years, you go and check with, uh, with um, at the bank how much um, equity you have on the house. If you have a lot, you take it, you go buy another property cash. So you have this one that you have cash and then you have this one that you're living on. So you're getting a rental income from this one that you bought cash and then you still continue with what you were doing on this house on weekends. Airbnb and then the money that you have made, you, 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 you keep on paying the bond. And then another two years, you go and take the equity, you buy another house um cash so guys that